this video, we're going to look at how to unreverse reversed scores in a multi-item measure, and then we're going to take these unreversed scores and put them together in a composite variable. Let's look at the data that we have over here. In this table, we have five columns, and each row is a participant. I've numbered these participants 1 through 10. Now, in a study like this, you'd really need far more than 10, but I'm just doing this so it all fits on one screen. And let's say we're trying to study the relationship between age and extroversion. Does, do people's extroversion, does it go up or down as they get older? Um, or does it stay the same? Do we have any evidence one way or another? So in this study, we have the participants, and we would probably need hundreds of participants to, to be more sure. Um, but here we've got 10 participants, we've got the age of all the participants, and then we've got a result from a person, uh, some results from a personality test that measure extroversion. Now, because extroversion encompasses lots of ideas, and we want to get in different nuances and look at things from a different, from various perspectives, we need to uh, ask different questions, and that's how most psychological uh, traits or characteristics are. We need to ask a number of questions that cover the whole range of whatever we're uh, going to measure. So for this question, or for this, this survey, we measured extroversion with three questions, and the instruction said, indicate how much you agree with the following statements, where one is strongly disagree to five is strongly agree. And then we had three sentences, I talk a lot, which is extroversion one, EXT one, and so the higher the score there, the more extroverted you are, because talking a lot is associated with extroversion. Now the second one is very different, it says I'm a rather quiet person. So that a high score would indicate that you're not a very extroverted person, more introverted, whereas a low score would indicate extroversion. So the first one, the uh, five indicates extroversion. For two, a score of one indicates extroversion. So we can say that question two is reverse scored. It's measuring things in the opposite direction. So I have taken the results here and I've called them EXT2, but I've added REV for reversed on it so that we know that it's measuring things in the other direction. And then the third question is, I like taking control of a situation, which is a way of measuring uh, dominance, which is uh, another part of extroversion in most models of, uh, of extroversion. And again, here, a high score indicates extroversion. I like taking control of a situation. So this is called EXT3. So we have the three variables. Two are non-reversed, and the middle one, ext is reversed. Now, what are we going to do to get rid of these reverse scores? Because we want to, we're going to combine all the scores together and uh, take, an, take an average so we can get a better picture of someone's extroversion. Um, because it's, it's easy to say, oh yeah, I talk a lot. Yeah, I must be really extroverted. But then when I think about, ooh, I'm a quiet person, yeah, a lot of times I am a quiet person. If nobody's talking to me, I don't go uh, talking to, to them. So I might give a one, a five for the first one, but maybe only, but also a, a four for the second one. And then if we average them, nine plus uh, five plus two, which would be, uh, um, no, I said four, which would be like a two, that would come out to about an average of three and a half. But we'll see what this all looks like as we go along here. So we, uh, um, to unreverse the score, what we want to do is we want to create an unreversed variable. So I am going to left click on column E and insert a new column here. And Excel knew what I was thinking. It said, aha, you want a new variable in here. And it even named it EXT2 for me because it knew it came after EXT1. And now what I want to do is I want to calculate the unreversed score. Now the formula that we're going to use for the unreversed score is down here. It says unreversed score equals highest score possible plus lowest score possible minus reversed score. 
So in our scale, the highest score possible was five, the lowest score possible was one. So we're gonna say that the unreversed score is five plus one minus the reversed score, whatever we, whatever's in this column, F, or six minus reversed score. So I'm going to put an Excel formula in here. I click in this cell, I type equal to indicate that this is a formula, six minus the unreversed score for this row, which is F5. So I type in F5, and I put a little box around F5 to check to make sure that's what I want. And yeah, that's the score that I want to unreverse. And I press Enter, and it gave me three. So three unreversed becomes three, which makes sense. And then there's a little drop-down box here, and it says override all cells in this column with, with this formula. Yep. And it takes the data from each line and puts it where it should be. So a one became a five, a two became a four, down here a four became a two, and that is um, our unreversed uh, score. Now we have the three variables, the three components of extroversion in the unreversed form. So we could say, oh, we can, we can get rid of this column. Now, if I just delete this column, you're gonna see there's a problem. I'm going to left click here, delete, and oh, everything in ext2 was based on a formula. Now I deleted that line from the formula. So let me control Z to undo that. And what we need to do is we need to convert everything that's in column E from a formula. See how this says minus or equals six minus F5? We need to convert that to a value. So the way that we do that is I click in the cell and then I use shift down arrow to select all the numbers there. And I do control C for copy. So I've copied all those formulas. And I'm gonna paste the values. So I go up to this paste command and I go down to paste values and it'll overwrite the formulas with just the numbers. So I click paste values. And it doesn't look like anything changed, but when I go up to the formula bar, it just has a number. Now you might see that there's still some dotted lines there. I'm going to press escape and that those disappeared. That was the shortest, but it's still selected. So now we have the unreversed scores. I can go back to F, right click on it, delete, and the scores don't change. So now, so we have unreversed the reversed scores. And now what we want to do is we want to combine them all into one variable. So up here in the column header, I'm going to call the new variable extroversion. And I click enter and it gets added to the table automatically. And what I want it to be is I want it to be the averages of the average of these three scores. So I click in the box and I'm going to use the Excel command average. Average equals average open parentheses, and then I put the cell of the first number, so D4, then two dots, and now I put in the last number that I want averaged in a row, which is uh, F5. Now, let's see. I made a mistake there. I wanted to start with D5. Okay, let me go back there. D5. Oh, yeah, now... And I want to end with F5, F5. And there it lights up D5 to F5, lets me know that I'm doing it right. I'm glad uh, uh, it showed me because I'd made a mistake there. So the average from D5 to F5, I press Enter, and it says 4.33. And now I go down to this drop down menu and overwrite all the cells. And there we have all of the, the data, the new variable extroversion. But those decimal points are so long, and humans don't like looking at long decimal points. So I'm going to go up to, to column G, right-click it to select it, and then on the Home key, I'm going to go into this Number section and change the formatting to Number, which only has two decimal points, and that's a lot easier to read. So we can see this is, just looks a lot nicer. Now we have our variable extroversion. We can do a correlation between age and extroversion. 
And if we had lots of variables, we might want to say, well, let's get rid of these, these individual items that we no longer need. And we could delete columns D, E, and F. But if we do that, remember, there's a formula there. So we have to convert all of these to values. So we're going to do Shift, Down Arrow, Control C for copy. And then I'm going to do Paste, Values. And now there's no longer a formula, just a number. So I can go over and right click on column D, delete. Right click on the new column D, delete. And right click on the last one and delete it. And now we've got a table with just the variables that we're interested in, age and extroversion. Now, something interesting is that since this is a table, we can sort these and we could say, aha, who's the most extroverted? We could sort from largest to smallest. So we do that and we see that the extroversion scores go from 4.33 all the way down to 2.00. And something interesting when we start sorting is this command and conditional formatting in Excel. If I click all the numbers in this cell, I can use conditional formatting, and if we use color scales, where green is high and red is uh, low, if I click that, that kind of groups them by color. And we can see, aha, the green are the extremely extroverted people, the yellow are extroverted, the orange are somewhat introverted, and the red are extremely introverted. So that's, that's just something interesting to do with the, uh, the conditional formatting. Now, here at Azusa Pacific, something that we like to do is relate the different concepts that we're looking at to, to biblical concepts because we're a, a university where people are trying to follow Christ. So I'd like to reflect on a Bible verse that this reminds me of. Now, if this doesn't interest me, interest you, uh, please turn this off. But this whole idea of reversing scores is kind of like the... Uh, um, the Bible verse in Proverbs 18 that says, the first to plead his case seems right until another comes and examines him. So there's, it's the idea that there's always two sides to a story. We don't have the whole uh, uh, perspective of the situation in mind. So even in a simple set of questions like trying to find out how extroverted I am, if somebody asks me, oh, are you really talkative? Oh, yeah, I'm really talkative. But then somebody asks the opposite thing, are you a quiet person? And I'll say, oh yeah, I am kind of a quiet person. I, uh, I prefer uh, listening rather than talking. And I, uh, uh, I, I might not uh, uh, talk too much. And so maybe I'm not as extroverted as I thought I was. And by having reverse scored questions, we kind of force ourselves to look at the other perspective and get a more balanced point of view which is something that we should try doing in all aspects of life and avoid rushing to conclusions when we just hear one side of the story, but realize that the first to please it, plead his case seems right until another comes and examines him, and then things might be a little different.